everyone, I'm Amelia and I'm five years old. Hi, I'm Joshua and I'm seven years old. Hey, this is Mommy. What's up, everyone? I'm Daddy. And you're listening to It's Movie Night. And this week we watched Leo. Netflix put out this animation about a month ago in 2023. It's rated PG and has a runtime of one hour and 42 minutes. Some other movies Netflix put out recently were The Magician's Elephant and The Monkey King. So they got an animal thing going. Yeah. Girls, what would you say this movie's about? A lizard that talks. Yes, it is about a lizard that talks. Amelia, could you add anything? It's about a sub who wants the kids to take Leo home. Perfect. Yes, it's about a fifth grade classroom pet lizard named Leo. And every Friday, a new kid gets to take Leo home for the weekend where he reveals to them that he could speak and also offers them advice on their personal issues. Some familiar voices in this movie, Leo is voiced by Adam Sandler. He is Dracula in the Hotel Transylvania movies, Brenner from Pixels, and Mommy and Daddy's favorite, Robbie Hart in the movie The Wedding Singer. What a classic. Mm -hmm. Squirtle is voiced by Bill Burr. He is mostly known as a stand-up comedian, um, but he has done some work as Butch in The Puppy Dog Pals, which Zosha used to be a huge fan of, Mm. and he played Mayfeld in The Mandalorian. Jada's dad is Jason Alexander, who is Hugo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Robert Grant in Dustin Checks In, and he's mostly known as George Costanza from Seinfeld. The principal is played by Rob Schneider, who is in almost every single Adam Sandler movie. He plays the bellman in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, Gus in The Bench Warmers, and parents, you will probably remember him as Deuce Bigelow in Deuce Bigelow. <laughs> and then there are three directors in this movie. Robert Marionetti, who is a background artist and animator for SNL. Robert Smeagol, who wrote Hotel Transylvania 1 and 2. He's also the voice of Mr. Beefy from Little Nicky. And he's triumphed the insult comic dog on Conan O'Brien. And the last director is David Wachenheim. He's been in the art department for Hotel Transylvania 2, Despicable Me, and an interesting one was Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's a throwback. That is a throwback. Three directors, though, for an animated film? That seems kind of ridiculous, but all right. The Into the Spider-Verse movies had more than two directors, so it's actually not that odd for animations. Okay. Seems interesting, because, I mean, I don't know. What do you have to direct? It's all... More eyes, the better. That's true. Obviously, this is the first time that we've all watched this movie, because it's brand new. So let's talk about how hyped we were to see this movie, because it is brand new. I had heard a lot of positive things about this movie, whether Mm -hmm. it be like people just saying that they were watching it on a Facebook post or um, it popping up in news feed like, hey, watch Leo now. And I'm like, oh, cool. A new animation. Adam Sandler hasn't made anything in a while. So, all right, let's see what we've got, because I know as children, I feel like most of our generation enjoyed Adam Sandler movies. Absolutely. Um, If I go back to watch some of them now, I cringe. Um, But at the time, loved them. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Adam Sandler made the Hotel Transylvania movies, which we like very much until the very last one. Yes, what I like about the Hotel Transylvania, too, is that he did a really good job at balancing kid humor with parent humor. Yeah. And then, like, those things that you can relate to, like your little kid growing up, and they don't need you anymore. And that would be more so our parents um, with the stage that we're at in life, because mm-hmm. our kids still very much so need us. Um, but it was relatable, and I thought it was cool that it showed all these people grew up. Steve Buscemi and all of that, you know, they're all parents <laughs> yeah. now, and their kids are growing up, and it's it, it was nice. So, yeah, we had some somewhat higher expectations for this movie, I guess. Yeah, I agree with that, because it's not like those other movies let me down. Yes, so the biggest takeaway from this movie is that people of all ages are dealing with their own problems, whether it be not being accepted at school by other kids, or even adults at work who aren't being accepted, or just dealing with the loss of a grandparent or parent, you know, there's just no age limit for emotions. Some people need guidance, but there's a really cool scene that I liked in this movie, and it's where Leo comes back. Because like Amelia had said, all the kids get to take him home over the weekend, so he gives them advice, and when he comes back, one of them he says that he just really listened. And I thought that that was such a cool scene, because that's all some people need, is just to be heard. They want to just talk to somebody, talk their problems out, talk through their problems, and I just thought it was a beautiful scene. I don't know how you felt about it, or if you remember it. I do remember it because it was it seemed to be the only time that Leo actually has a realization of his own that he actually learns a lesson yeah. because the entire time Leo is just teaching kids stuff that he has learned over the past 74 years of him being alive. Um, so, yeah, it was a nice touch that he actually got something out of it as well. Yes. And then something else that's nice about Leo is that he believes that he only has one more year left to live. 
So he's using this time to kind of get away from the school because he wants to break away. He wants to get clear of these kids so that he can go live in the Everglades and live out the rest of his year. And he learns through these kids that he doesn't want to be alone. He doesn't want to go off. He wants to stick around for these kids. He wants to spread his knowledge to these kids before he's gone. So that way, when he is gone, he's remembered as somebody who helped. He's remembered as somebody who got them through hard times. And it's kind of pleasant. It is. It's nice to see that. And if anything, you can kind of relate it back to your own life. If you were, you know, you might take it down a dark path, but let's think about our own grandparents. You know, they're getting older and no matter you're a lizard <laughs> or a human, mm -hmm. you want to be remembered. You want to know that your family, your your kids in the classroom have taken away something from you, that your life has a little bit of meaning to it, that even after you have moved on from this world, something about you is going to live on through your grandchildren, your children, or your fifth grade class. Yeah, Leo is just an all around good role model for this movie. He helps the kids learn lessons for confronting fears, insecurities, self-love, and just being included by other kids. So other than Leo and the lessons these kids learned, um, do we have any other positives that we want to mention? I know that I thought the animation was okay. Yeah, I think kids will like the animation of this movie because it's not little baby bum. It's not super simple songs. It is above that. It is. It almost looks like a despicable me in a way. Like it's right up that DreamWorks alley. Yeah, I'd say it's a cross between some DreamWorks and like the Hotel Transylvania Sony animation styles. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, pleasing for little ones to watch. And on the flip side, some negatives. Uh, the first one I have, Adam Sandler's voice as Leo. Super annoying. Did not like it at all. It was, it, I was very aware that it was Adam Sandler. Um, but he did this weird thing where he talked slower, by, but yet still somehow sounded like he was talking the same. I don't know if that makes any sense, but in my mind, it was almost like, you know how you could change the speed of talking for an audiobook? <laughs> yeah. It was like he was talking <laughs> normal, but then someone took it down just a couple notes to make it slower. Um, so that's kind of the vibe I got that it was like, okay, I know he's old, he's a lizard, blah, blah, blah. But like th there was something slightly off about the voice. And then one of my biggest bugaboos was the music. It was so bad. Sometimes it's only a few sentences. Sometimes it didn't even rhyme. I'd like this movie so much more if it had no music at all. I can agree with that. I did not like the parts that didn't rhyme. I'm just like, you're just speaking gibberish. Like, you just <laughs> yeah. you sound like me when I'm doing silly stuff in my kitchen, you know? Yeah. You guys know, we all sing random stuff all the time. But it was just like, I get that kids would like music. Most smaller children enjoy having musical numbers in movies, but... Yeah, the lyrics and stuff, it just didn't land right. And we did ask the girls if they liked the music, and they just said it was okay. Yeah, Zosha was like, it was, it was just fine. Amelia was like, I, I'm not going to ask Alexa to play it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that's not so great about Leo is the influence that this movie can have on kids. Um, we had talked about this with Zosha, and she was <laughs> she had a really good response for this that Maddie and I thought <laughs> yeah. was funny. One of the things Maddie brought up is when Squirtle leaves his shell... That can't happen. Turtles do not leave their shells. Mm -hmm. So then I asked her, well, that didn't bother you? And what did she say? She said, yeah, but it's a turtle that can stand and talk. <laughs> and that's exactly what she said and just ended her sentence there. And we were like, yeah, it's an animation. So, yep. okay. If your child is at least seven years old, Zosha's in second grade, she understands the concept of I'm, I'm highly aware that what I'm watching right now is not real. <laughs> But still, uh, kids do mean things to each other and teachers, and there's zero punishments for it. At one point, a child drives a school bus that is full of other kids, and we feel like kids might think, oh, okay, that's appropriate in a heroic situation, but let's back it up even more. The reason this kid ends up driving the bus is because two teachers are fighting. They are fighting physically with each other while one of them is at the wheel of this bus full of children. And it was just one of those things of like, what is what is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. And then another thing I wanted to mention, because it bothered me so much, don't get me wrong, they double back on this topic, but one of the things that Leo does is every time he goes home with these children, he tells them, hey, you're the only one that I can talk to. I'm your special friend, so you can't tell anyone about this conversation. And that's not cool. Um, Leo does say it's only okay because I'm a lizard and not a strange adult, but still, 
Don't even put this idea in kids' heads, man, because it's not always a strange adult. It's statistically someone a child knows. So yeah, this 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 did not sit right with me. Yeah, it was super weird, but I'm glad that the kids said that. Oh, I'm not supposed to keep secrets. Yes, I do like that one kid does say, oh, if I ever hear that, my mom says I need to tell them right away, which is good that it's mentioned, but then he still ends up keeping the secret because of what Leo says. So that doesn't, yeah, still a problem. And then I know that there are for sure some negatives that are going to come up in parental guidance. Yes. So language is mild that you would expect from this age group. We don't use name calling in our house, but words like that are heard throughout the entire film. There is bullying and gaslighting as well. Moving on to violence, Leo gets his tail chopped off by a Roomba, which you're like, ooh, uh, it, <laughs> all of us kind of went, ugh. Um, it does grow back, of course, because he is a lizard. There is also a scene where animals escape a party and things get chaotic and we see people being injured in the background. Scary wise, I wouldn't say there's anything outright scary, but Amelia did mention at one point um, Leo finds himself dropped into the Everglades and she was very concerned for him because he was scared because he was in an unfamiliar environment. Um, So nothing that's going to cause some nightmares at night, but more so it'll cause concern for your little ones. And lastly, some grown up stuff. There are so many adult references. It is an Adam Sandler movie, so we were highly expecting this. But let's start with a teacher calls a past substitute teacher a closet drunk. There's a rumor about a kid smoking in middle school. One girl says her mom looks like a celebrity and another kid responds with, yeah, if they've been drinking, she might. Just a little inappropriate for this age group. Then we move on to things that shouldn't be mentioned in front of smaller ears. It went over our girls' heads, thank goodness, but it involves one sentence about Christmas in the ending song. And one more thing I wanted to mention is the dynamic of Jada's life. Her parents' attitude is all harder for smaller children to grasp, but we as adults know that it displays themes of judgment, threatening money to get your way, self-absorption, poor family communication and showing of love and more like Jada's dad's just not a good person. Yeah, not at all. So as for an age recommendation, it's an animation. So kids are probably going to like it. They're probably going to like the music. They're going to like the silly lizard. However, to fully grasp a lot of the grown up stuff, I'm going to say the kids that are in fifth grade in this movie is probably a good age, 10 years old. Yes, they'll be able to relate to it a lot more. And just if you're younger, it's just something colorful to have on in the background. (laughs) So Rotten Tomato critics have this movie certified fresh at 82%, which is a thumbs up. Audiences have it even higher at a 92%, which remains a thumbs up. Let's see how it holds up in this house. Zosha, do you give Leo a thumbs up, a thumbs middle, or a thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Wow. Amelia, what do you give this movie? Thumbs middle. A thumbs middle? Okay. Mommy? I'm stuck between a thumbs middle and a thumbs down, Um, but I'm going to go thumbs middle, just looking at it from a parent-child perspective. Um, From a parent perspective, thumbs down, but being a mom, I'm going to go thumbs middle. What about you, Daddy? I'm going thumbs down. I hope I never, ever have to watch this movie again. I did not like it at all. I am very shocked by the 92%. Yeah. Like that, you said that, and I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) But if any of you would like to add Leo to your movie night list, it is only available on Netflix at this time. So go to Netflix. And after watching, let us know if you give it thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down. And when you want to let us know what you think about the movie, please find us on social media. We like to post pictures of us on our movie nights, letting you know what snacks and sweets we're eating. We post a dad joke as well as a sneak peek clip theme to the episode coming out that week. It's a fun place to hang out. Our Facebook is It's Movie Night, and our Instagram is It's Movie Night Pod. Thank you for listening. Join us next week for another movie night. Bye. Bye.